Greetings, I'm John Spear, I can't handle Yafka or numbers for shit, and welcome to Pyanodon's Recap Super Shorts. We were working toward Pi 2 Science, and we said, wow, we're gonna need a lot of glass products. And so I said, why don't I go into Yafka, our factorio calculator that works with mods, and let's figure out exactly how many glass products we need for science. So I figured out that number by going through every single science product we needed and specifically looking for the bits of it that required glass. And you see, this would be all well and good if I had not completely fucked that up. Because later, when I made our total Yafka um, project sheet for all of Pi 2 science and figured out exactly how many glass products I need, I was like, fuck, we need so many more glass products, fuck. So when we initially made this glass system, I recorded a video. It was actually one of the very first videos I recorded, and I recorded it out of order at about the same time as episode 3. And in that video, I detailed our glass system. It was really fucked up. Everything about it was bad. So we um, had to fix some stuff, but then we didn't fix anything else, because why would we do that? And I said, this glass build will certainly never change. This episode will certainly also never need to change. Glass is done. Cue 60 hours later, when I find out that I need to make a new glass build, and I'm like, fuck. And I was especially chagrined about this, because during when I made this glass build, about the same time of as episode 3, you may or may not remember that in episode 3 I pointed out that there was something messed up with our coal power plant, and that I had missed a self-insert on this burner. And I said during episode 3 that 7 episodes from now, if you saw me talk about how, oh boy, I just noticed there's a missing self-insert on this burner, you can laugh and remember that I record these episodes out of order. But you see, you see, because I am re-recording this episode now, I can no longer claim that there's a missing self-inserter on this burner because there isn't one, because we fixed it so long ago. So anyway, I thought I would tell you that little tidbit. The last vestige of a time when I w really was recording the videos out of order, something I do not do anymore because I'm not sacrilegious. But let's talk about quartz numbers. Well, okay. We made, we found the new quartz numbers for when we wanted to make pi 2 at a rate of 0.3 per second. And then we were like, hmm, what if we made pi 2 at a rate of 0.2 per second? So these quartz numbers are actually too much. So I guess let's just talk about how this shit works. Thanks to our friend mining productivity, 12 um, quartz ore mines will make 13.2 quartz ore per second, which we crush in a jaw crusher into crushed quartz and stone, and then use in a ball mill to make powdered quartz and gravel. Now you see, the thing about powdered quartz that makes it sometimes iffy is that in order to make powdered quartz into glass, you actually have to have pure sand lying around, and a lot of pure sand. So we were like, we need to get pure sand from any place we can get. So we turned the stone and gravel into sand and then turned that into some pure sand and sent that pure sand down this transport belt. But now let's head down with the powder quartz and quartz over to our glass build. Our glass build was made far away from quartz ore because we wanted to make it next to stone ore because we needed the stone and kerogen to fuel our glass works. We also needed the stone to make some more pure sand, but we'll we'll talk about all of that in a bit. Let's first talk about getting all the pure sand we need for these many, many, how many glassworks is these? Um, 11 glassworks. To make all the sand we need, we are not using the soil to sand washing recipe, because that's actually quite inefficient compared to an alternative. You can turn soil into more sand using a solid separator. These 24 soil extractors feed into seven solid separators that make a lot of random byproducts, and also an enormous amount of sand, oh, two belts worth at least. Just enough over two belts that we needed We needed to do some fucky shit, we'll talk about it. All of the byproducts split off from the sand and go straight up to a processing center. The coarse fraction gets processed into stone and gravel, which we make into, naturally, more sand. All the extra byproducts get um, burned in a burner into ash while the extra biomass goes into a gas refinery to make flue gas so that we can turn flue gas into ash, because having an extra ash supply is never a bad thing. But yeah, so we had two belts of sand, we wanted to make sure it was balanced, so we made sure all of the sand first went to this belt that I'm standing on now, and then this belt to the right of it. More sand was, of course, coming in from where we were dealing with all the stone from the stone patch. The amount of stone we're mining is pretty small, and resulted in enough, um, stone to support two jaw crushers and gravel, and then two jaw crushers turning gravel to sand. And then all that sand splits into a total of three belts. The first two of those full belts go to these 12 washers, turning into ginormous amounts of pure sand and also muddy sludge that we don't really need. Although I guess it could supply a cool wood farm. We're left with two belts of pure sand, some of which is brought in from where we mine the quartz. And that pure sand is distributed between half and half of the glassworks. 
These glassworks are run with a wide variety of fuels. Most of them come from this shale oil processing system over here, which turns kerogen from four electric mining drills into shale oil, and then the shale oil into condensates light oil and heavy oil, and we're getting most of the steam for this from an electric boiler with a little help from our friend Coke. Well, okay, it would be a little help from our friend Coke if we were extracting this ash from the boiler output, but okay, I guess we'll just never do that. Talking to you, Arch, whose job this was. Anyway, I am turning the extra condensates into natural ga refined natural gas, which has a fuel value but is otherwise useless unless you get a specific turret upgrade, and BTX, and then I'm just throwing away the tailings. We are pulling off the usual fluid dumping system, where we dump fluids until all of the pie tanks are full and then we stop dumping fluids. That way we always have enough of all of the fluid fuels. Before, we were working this out by ratioing it up so that if there was ever a shortage of one, all the others would kick on, and it didn't work. To be clear, there is no way to do this effectively, in my opinion, without just throwing away fluids when you have too much of some, and then stopping when you have too much. I do realize, however, that maybe I shouldn't be putting natural gas into a sinkhole because natural gas doesn't fit in a sinkhole. It goes into a gas vent. I will put that on my list of things to fix next time I play. The extra fluid we use, however, comes from the acetylene, which, you know, we have so much of, thanks to our wood farm and top rats and thing and whatever. If we were trying to run Pi 2 science packs, I'm pretty sure these 11 glassworks would be enough. At 0.2 Pi 2 per second, however, we only need 8 of these glassworks to be running. With the help of some hot air, we make glassware, which requires rubber stoppers that we don't have yet. Petri dishes in four glassworks, all being run by acetylene. And then glass and optical sets. I can't tell you why we did half the things we did here, but shit was fucked, you know? To make the boron trioxide that's necessary for the glassware and the optical sets, we brought in borax. And also coke. The borax turns into diborane in these three electrolyzers using five electrolyzers worth of hydrogen. We're also throwing the extra oxygen as a train input. And as usual, using the same circuit system to make sure that the hydrogen and oxygen only get vented when they are not both full. The diborane turns into boric acid with water, and then we use four high pressure furnaces to turn boric acid into boron trioxide. Sorry, five, I missed one. Haha. -ha. That's pretty much the glass build, though. It's a lot simpler and less incredibly annoying than the last time we made the glass build, which was so much worse. You can see this craziness and all of our failed attempts on our streams, which run every Tuesday at 6 p.m. Mountain Time. But for now, that's it for today's episode. In the next episode, we'll talk about the absolute beast that is Petrochem. Something which is fundamentally, in and of itself, so fucked that I am not sure if my describing it to you will really help. I think it will help. But you've got to fuck around with it yourself a lot. We will still attempt to talk about it. As always, if you have any feedback, I'd love to hear it. I hope you enjoyed.